This week, it's LGBTQ, taxes, death, fear-mongering, redundant regulations, and science telling us to smoke a blunt with lobsters before you eat them. I'm DJ Alex. This is your Hunky Vape. Five on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 2nd of June, 2021. All around the globe, the price of a pack of cigarettes is not going up. But the price of combustion eliminating products is increasingly taxed to oblivion. Even in the UK, where they realize the importance of tobacco harm reduction, tobacco duty rise is left out of the budget, while harm reduction products continually face increasing opposition. Why? Data clearly indicates the enormous societal cost of smoking. In Pakistan alone, cigarette use costs a whopping $3.85 billion from 15 million smokers. Why? Don't elected officials see the big picture? Obviously not. Like most of society, they're simply stuck in an uninformed, pejorative posture based on misguided stigmatism. Over the past century, views on smoking have transformed dramatically from socially acceptable, almost expected, to moralized and disgusting. In line with this conversion, lawmakers continually ignore science in favor of evangelical parents. Ignorant parents raging on a misguided, zealous crucifixion of harm reduction products. Parents catch their children using a jewel or a puff bar and instantly vilify the manufacturer of these products rather than admit any responsibility in the situation. Heaven forbid these parents take a step back calm down and analyze the situation for what it truly is. Because if they did, these parents might realize they're the ones that are culpable in the trauma or neglect, which led the child to seek drug abuse, violent behavior, hypersexuality, or even self harm. Cannabis isn't the gateway drug. Alcohol isn't a gateway drug. Nicotine isn't a gateway drug. Caffeine isn't a gateway drug. Trauma is the gateway. Molestation is the gateway. Neglect is the gateway. Drug abuse, violent behavior, hypersexuality, and self-harm are symptoms of much, much bigger issues. Think about that for a second. Now think about the bigger issues that confront society as a whole. What is the most damaging preventable cause of harm to society? Think about what is killing one person every five seconds. Whoops. Another person just died from smoking. 1 billion smokers combust 18 billion cigarettes a day and over 6.5 trillion cigarettes every single year. Isn't it time to focus on the biggest preventable cause of death on the planet? Isn't it time to reverse course and change the global smoking rate? Well, what if I told you there was already a product invented in 2003 that accidentally causes people to quit smoking? Now, what if this product was just 1% safer than smoking? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you have to support that? I mean, it's safer. Well, even if it's 1% safer, think of the lives you could save. Wouldn't you want this product available and cheaply sold everywhere? Well, how about if this product was 50% safer than smoking? Or 75% safer? Or 95% safer? Or even, what if it was 99% safer than smoking? 
You can argue all day long about how much safer vaping is compared to smoking, but doing so would let another 22,000 people die from smoking. The fact is that vaping is not smoking. Vaping is safer than smoking, and it's time to end the war on vaping. It's time for culpable parents to focus on their true ordained purpose of raising happy, healthy children and let lawmakers and scientists focus on the real villain of society. And that villain isn't Jewel. And it certainly isn't vaping technology. Vaping technology is a game changer and will one day eliminate the real gangster at play here which is combustion. Yeah, I know, I know. You're all watching this going, what happened to vaping news? This guy's supposed to be a former smoker talking about vaping news, not some evangelical preacher castrating combustion like Greenpeace supports millions of rainbow warriors protecting the fragile planet. Earth Day was two months ago, I know, I know. And June is Pride Month. A month when millions of people and even global entertainment companies like Netflix come together in support of the LGBTQ community. Well, something that the vaping community taught me recently was the power of diversity and inclusion. You know, I always prided myself on being a fair, open-minded person. I always try to seek out the truth and respect other opinions when I disagree with them. As a society, we can only improve ourselves when we fully comprehend the facts. And this cannot take place without realizing some people will always have fervor opposition until they learn the, pl learn the facts. I mean, you know. So you gotta find common ground with people. And that requires conversation. So to broaden my horizons, and have conversations with those adamantly opposed to tobacco harm reduction, I finally got around to opening up a Twitter account for Hunky Vape. You'll see it. It's already been updated in the social media pop-ups you see in the bottom of the screen here, okay? Well, if you ever need to get a hold of me, you ever want to communicate, you ever want me to see something that's you know published out there somewhere, now you got another way to do it. Well, speaking of Twitter, how about artificial intelligence is being used by researchers analyzing tweets and they found an increasing amount of discussions on e-cigarettes and it's all taking place online. Big freaking surprise, right? I mean, I've already shown how social media is where the kids are getting all this stuff. They're not getting them from stores. So making it increasing impossible for adults to access vaping products is just I mean, pardon the expression, but it's like pissing in the wind, okay? An increasing amount of discussions on e-cigarettes is taking place online and everybody seems to be really happy with the flavors. Matter of fact, we're gonna talk about this today. A research team analyzed over 30,000 tweets and found only positive tweets about flavors. There's a real shocker. Vaping flavors is what keeps me from going back to combustible tobacco. There's no nicotine in this. It's just flavor. But, unfortunately, these researchers are now going to use AI to crawl all the social media platforms out there so that they can find promotional activities such as giveaways, discounts, and buy more, save more campaigns to use in the fight against tobacco harm reduction products. Doesn't that sound ridiculous? Fighting against harm reduction? I mean, that kind of explains why the opening segment to this video, I was so evangelical, okay? And it's all about the facts and perspective that define contradiction. You want something else ironic? How about Al Clear Wisconsin Health Department introduces anti-vaping campaign meant to spread misinformation 
meant to spread information about the dangers of vaping. Yeah. So as to prevent people from trying it. Literally, that's the quote. The Alliance for Substance Abuse Prevention released four short videos to spread awareness about the dangers of vaping. And a foundation is giving $100,000 in grants to area nonprofits to foster this ideology. More Bloomberg money keeping people smoking. Want some more irony? San Jose City Council is considering a flavored tobacco products ban because the American Heart Association board member, Dr. John Ma, said colorful packaging complete with cartoon characters and flavors such as bubblegum, candy, and fruit are enticing youth tobacco use. So we must protect the next generation of smokers. Hello, vaping is not smoking. Hello, the American Cancer Society knows vaping reduces cancer rates 99% from those found in smokers. Yup, the American Cancer Society has openly admitted that vapors only have a 1% chance of getting all cancers compared to smokers. But here we have the American Cancer Society Cancer and Action Network, who is not the same organization as the American Cancer Society, bamboozling people into thinking vaping is the same as combustion. More Bloomberg tactics keeping people smoking instead of switching to a safer alternative. More fear-mongering tactics keeping people oblivious to common sense logic. Not lighting something on fire is healthier to breathing in the byproducts of combustion. There is no combustion in vaping. Vapor is not smoke. But politicians don't care about science. They only care about making themselves look good, passing laws that end up accomplishing the opposite of what they intended to do. Just like in Michigan, where the Michigan House is advancing multiple bills banning vitamin E acetate in vaping products. Here's where half-truths will cause more harm than leaving something be whatever it is, all on its own. The CDC strongly linked THC products containing vitamin E acetate to 68 deaths, including three in Michigan. So now lawmakers are making a law to define a misdemeanor punishable offense of up to $10,000 for something that was already illegal. Every single one of these Avali deaths were caused by illicit, tainted, black market, illegal carts that contained vitamin E acetate. But they leave all that part out. And they only focus on the fact that it was vaping. Mm Mm-hmm. Vitamin E acetate is an oil. It is a synthetic form of vitamin E that is good for skin care. And I know firsthand because I was burned. And it helped healed my skin to the point where you can't even hardly tell that I was burned. But it is an oil. It's actually a synthetic form of vitamin E that can be eaten. But because it's only soluble in things like acetone and chloroform and ether... It should never, ever be inhaled. Lungs cannot break down oil. And if you inhale vaporized oil, you're going to get lipoid pneumonia. Anybody with fundamental understanding of anatomy, physiology, and chemistry will tell you that. Nicotine vaping 
only uses water-soluble ingredients. Ingredients that naturally dissolve and mix with water. It's common sense. Oil and water do not mix. Man, people need to learn some fundamental science. Ain't nothing to it but to get into it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for sticking around for the rest of the news and the conversation and the discussion about each of the individual articles. I'm working on the review for the Arc Fox. Got a couple other new things on here I've been working on. So uh, hopefully get them published this weekend or uh, Monday, I think, would probably be the latest. At least something new. So far, I'm very impressed with it. Also, I had to make myself a new cup of coffee. A little spoiled with the new arrangement here in the office. Still ironing out a bunch of stuff. But, every day, it's another progress. I had to upgrade my internet because I'm tired of having to wait three hours to upload a video every Friday. Now I got four times the speed, so theoretically it should take me a fourth of the time to upload it, right? Might make things a little more productive. Anyway... I really appreciate you guys sticking around. Let's jump right into the rest of the news here. So here we have it. It's published in the sun. Holy smoke, price of a pack of cigarettes not going up after the 2021 budget was released. Mm-hmm. No surprise here. We see this all over the place. They keep talking about all these bans on flavored tobaccos, increased taxes, but actual combustible tobacco, those prices don't go up. And when they do go up, they're so infinitesimally small, you can't even notice it. There's places right now where the tax on a bottle like this is like 50, 60 bucks. That is just ridiculous. You don't see a pack of cigarettes costing $60. Well, maybe in Australia, but not here. You can get a carton of cigarettes for that price, depending on the state you live in. I know last time I went to New York, went to Niagara Falls, it was like 15 bucks a pack or something. I thought that was outrageous. Well, thank God I found vaping. I know. Eventually, they're going to drive the price so far high that people are going to cut back and find alternatives. And then literally what's going to end up happening is you're going to have an all black market environment for the people that still want to continue to smoke because it's not illegal, just like it's not illegal to vape, even the places where they banned it. Well, the price is not going up in England for that. But the cost is always there. Looking at Islamabad. I was surprised. I'm looking at this article and I come up and I found smokers' medical bills that can be saved by extending nicotine replacement therapy products. I'm like, oh. I didn't realize it's Pakistan. Islamabad. It costs their country $3.85 billion from the 15 million smokers in Pakistan and you need to have efficient smoking cessation services available including re nicotine replacement therapies in government health care facilities aided by harm reduction products and that's exactly what vaping is it's a harm reduction product I'm glad that somebody over there at least have a basic comprehension of that. Unfortunately, the countries that don't are the ones that are listening to the World Health Organization because they do not differentiate between nicotine replacement therapy and heat not burn products. Yeah, 
or harm reduction products. They lump them all together. Common sense tells you it's not combustion. Therefore, it should not be lumped together. Let's move on. I'm trying to, you know, be a little more positive when it comes to these news reports. Expand things out a little bit better. Make things a little more interesting for you. So if you happen to see something going across the screen, it was my dogs that put it in the video. Sorry. So let's take a look at this scientific study because I told you we're going to be filling, you know, this information with lots of science. And this one is something that we can all relate to firsthand. Does it help smokers if we stigmatize them? I know I was stigmatized as a smoker by all the people that quit smoking. That's why, despite what you see in these videos, if I see somebody in person and they're still smoking and they've already heard my stance on the position, I'm not going to chastise them for their life choices. If they want to continue to smoke, let them continue to smoke. It's just not what I want to do. I want to try and extend my life. And for me, that means that I've made the choice to a safer harm reduction product. And people want to be stigmatized for not quitting completely. Listen, I made the choice to quit nicotine. If other people want to smoke and they want to smoke, then let them smoke. If other people want to switch to a safer harm reduction product and continue using the nicotine, so be it. Let them have, it's called better living through chemistry. It's a fundamental human right. If you're going to let them smoke carcinogen filled death sticks, then why aren't you going to let them continue consuming nicotine? You don't have a problem with people going to Starbucks. Move on. The science, beautiful research study, shows the smokers feel stigmatized. Yes, we did. Yes, we, yes, I did. Now I'm continually being stigmatized for vaping. But. Does stigmatized smokers do, stigmatizing smokers do more harm than good? I think we all know the answer to that. Of course it does. You're not going to change anybody's mind. When people were harping on me to quit smoking, do you know what I did? I lit up another cigarette, even if I was already smoking one, just to be a smart ass. People are adults that have made the choice, a conscious decision to do what they do. And you may have contributing factors that led you down that path, but we'll get to that later. However, stigmatizing smokers and stigmatizing vapors is going to have the opposite effect. And to be honest with you, I've come to realize that there's other things like trying to have conversations with people that have their mindset in a specific mentality. Well, it's a waste of time. Unfortunately, it's a waste of time. Some people, you can lead them to the water, but you will never get them to drink from it. It goes both ways. That's what I've been finding a lot lately. There's people out there that do not have a problem stigmatizing vapors and telling them, you're still smoking. You're going to kill yourself. They don't want to hear about the science. I have hundreds of studies that I've read and I try and show them they don't care well that was paid for by big tobacco or somebody else no it wasn't it was done by somebody who was going for their doctorate and needed to do some studies that's what they chose to do it on but they don't want to hear it they don't even want to engage in the conversation. But there are people out there that are simply uninformed. And sometimes all it does, all it takes is having a simple conversation with somebody to get them to understand there's more to the picture than what they see. Well, there'll be a link in the description below if you want to check out this study. It is say something that you already know from firsthand experience. 
So here we have the Canadian Vaping Association published another press release, and it says it's time to end the war on vaping. Well, let me tell you something. I got on the Twitter, finally got around to creating an account there. I know everybody's like, you know, they got the big hoopla. You got to get on Twitter, man. That's where all the people have the conversations. That's where everybody's at. Facebook is dead. It's kind of like, oh, what was that other social media platform? Leave a comment in the description below. I, I, had, a pay, I had a page there too. Till Facebook came along. Everybody moved from that one to, to Facebook. Oh, I don't know. It was your space or something. I don't know. Anyway, it's time to end the war on vaping. And I, uh, it says right here, a recent commentary written by Cliff Douglas, former vice president of tobacco control at the American Cancer Society and founder of the Center for Tobacco Control, calls for the end of the interceding warfare over vaping. Internecian warfare over vaping. Yeah. The, all these people are on Twitter and I, I got on and I'm like starting to read and I started to find stuff and I was sharing stuff and the stuff that I was looking for in midweek for the news to try and put on the thing. I said, you know, I'm not saving that. I'm putting that out there. Well, I'm putting that out there. It's amazing how many people are out there advocating for harm reduction products. I never knew how many people actively engaging conversations with people i mean not just anybody that's the thing about twitter you can get on somebody wrote an article and i responded right back to him i says you have no idea what it's like to be an addict because you don't unless you've actually experienced it you have no idea what it's like so you have no idea how hard it is to actually overcome an addiction or how proud you are when you finally accomplish your goal. And chastising people and preaching to them, if they're diehards, they're not going anywhere. You'll never get them to change their mind. They'll take their opinions with them to the grave. Well, for those of us that are actively involved in this, there are people that are actively involved in the actual policy making process. I'm not one, don't want to be one. I'll leave that to the experts because there's people out there that have made an entire career working for these different organizations. And I'm sure you know firsthand, there are people that go into government, depending on who's in office, and then they go into the private organizations. And then when somebody else gets in office, then they go back into government and they go back and forth. It's this nice little round rumble circle round robin circle we have going on in the political arenas you would think at some point in time that they would ban this type of behavior so that we could actually have real change that improves society but as long as there's money involved you'll never see any real change in politics nope well we've uh, talked about this before and if you haven't seen the Google Doc, get a hold of me and I'll send you it. It's amazing. But it basically talks to his colleagues who he's been working with over the years and says, enough is enough. You know the truth. The facts are here. You need to take your staunch ideology and take a couple steps back, regroup, and let's tackle the real problem head on. Well, here's another sector of society. We have parents who are alarmed at the raising, rising popularity of Puff Bar. Well, of course, if you take out Jewel, you don't think that there's going to be somebody else that's going to come along and fill the void? Puff Bar, peach ice. People need flavors. People want flavors. Especially adults who want to quit. There really isn't too many people out there that truly love tobacco vapes. And it's also probably because there really isn't a very good tobacco vape out there. Or if there is, it's maybe one or two brands. 
because it's not really tobacco flavor. They don't take the tobacco leaf and use that to make flavor. It's actually like caramel and other flavorings that they mix together to come up with something that kind of resembles like the positive attributes of tobacco. <clears throat> but that's a different conversation. Parents alarmed at the rising popularity of puff bar e-cigarettes among school students. Oh yeah? Not surprising. And I'm kind of glad that they're picking the safer harm reduction product instead of picking up a cigarette. Because I know what it's like once you pick up a cigarette. Here's how I started smoking. I was working in the Pittsburgh area at Kogo's. I don't know if you know what Kogo's is, so they're not around here anymore. I was working the midnight shift because I was going to college. When I first graduated, came, moved to Pennsylvania, was going to college, working midnight shift, standing there in front of all these cigarettes, all the drunk people had already gone home. Drank all the coffee I could drink, drank a can of Jolt, didn't help me. I was tired. I wanted to go sleep, but I couldn't until I got off work in the morning. All the drunk people had gone home for the day. The cops already made their rounds in. They're out and about chasing down the people that are drinking and driving or crashing on the way home or whatever. I'm standing there looking at these cigarettes. A whole wall of cigarettes. So I'll just try one. What could it hurt? So I tried one. It was nasty. I coughed. I hacked. There was nobody around, so I wasn't embarrassed about it. But I did get a nice little buzz from it. And it helped me stay awake. So that's when the cycle of addiction started. I had one cigarette. And then I had another one. And then another one. And then another one. And from that day forward, I was buying cigarettes every single day. Every single day. I was giving money to tobacco companies. Knowing all the damage that it does. Because the whole time I was growing up, they was being chastised and vilified too. Don't ever do this, man. It's bad. Well, kids are going to do what kids are going to do. And if they want to try something, they're going to try something. And if they like it, they're going to probably do it again. So here we have a product. The only problem with this product is it's 5% nicotine. That's 50 milligrams per milliliter. When I quit smoking, I was two and a half packs a day. That's how much I was smoking, two and a half packs a day. There were days that were better than that. There were days that were worse than that. Well, when I quit smoking, successfully quit smoking with vaping, I used it six milligram, not 50, six. This is almost 10 times the concentration, 10 times the strength. But then again, that little puff bar is theoretically supposed to last somebody an entire week because it's supposed to replicate each smoking sensation that you do. So you would just take two puffs. That's all you're supposed to do with the puff bar to replace your smoke break. Because there's only a couple hundred puffs in there. Do the math. But as a harm reduction tool, I want this to be available for anybody that wants to try it. Because it could easily be a gateway out of smoking. It's the off ramp from the smoking highway. You know. Unfortunately, this is coming from Australia. Queensland school students are smoking and trading a highly addictive flavored and disposable e-cigarette brand puff bar. It's just concerned parents and teachers. Possessing nicotine, electronic cigarettes is illegal without a prescription in every state and territory except South Australia. 
Puff Bars, Australia, sells disposable e-cigarettes online in a range of colors. Man, I wish I could still buy vaping stuff online. But that's another topic. New restrictions on imports. Vape industry against devices. House of Vape owner Andrew Cameron said he and the industry were totally against the devices. I understand why. Because those of us that actually use vaping to quit smoking use much less than that. However, there are a few people, probably quite a lot of people by now, that the only reason that they actually quit smoking was because of 50 milligram concentrations in a jewel or a puff bar. And if it saves one life, in my opinion, it's worth it. So stop vilifying them because it's the same technology that we're doing. Granted, on a much smaller scale. But that's a different topic of conversation. The reality is, Juul technology is a game changer. And the fact that they are able to grow as quickly as they did indicates we could easily eliminate smoking on the planet. Stop vilifying the technology that is allowing people the gateway out of combustible tobacco addiction. And it will slowly, as time goes on, even if they regulate it to oblivion, the technology is not going to go away. Because I could very easily replace this mod with a flashlight. As long as I had a nice high-powered battery in there, they're called mech mods. You guys know what I'm talking about. If you don't, Google search it. Very simple. The technology to do this, now that the information and the knowledge is out of the bag, anybody can do this. Easy. Easy peasy. Matter of fact, I might, I bought one a while back. I might do a video on that. Matter of fact, I might do that tomorrow. Just for shits and giggles. Moving on, following e-cigarette conversations on Twitter using artificial intelligence, an increasing amount of discussion on e-cigarettes is taking place online. Everything is taking place online nowadays. People don't have real conversations. People don't interact with each other. During the COVID lockdowns, I thought it was the greatest thing, you know, since sliced bread. You had all these uh, teleconferencing Companies that opened up all their services and said, you know, you guys are all working from home. So, here, you can use our services for free. Because they knew that once you got used to it and you got it and you enjoyed it, it's like you went to back to work. You told the boss about it and said, hey, we need to start using this. It was pretty cool being able to interact with each other. It didn't take nothing to set it up. Just click a button, click an email. Nice conversations. Well, everything's taking place online. And artificial intelligence is not something that's going to go away either. Technology is something that continually evolves whether you want it to or not. You can't put it back in the box. Once Pandora's box is open, it's going to grow on its own. However, we should be able to determine what that intelligence, artificial intelligence, is being utilized for. And here... They obviously have an agenda where they're going to go around to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook with this AI, and they're going to clearly document all the times any of the businesses out there were advertising these things. And they're going to be able to go through hundreds of thousands, if not millions of posts from all these different social organizations, social media networks. And they're going to be used that to make an example out of the one time that somebody decides they don't give a shit and they're going to target it towards the kids because they're in a college town or whatever. If you own a business, you better be careful on what you're doing because they're going to catch you and you're going to be the escape goat. You're the one that they're going to play and pin it all on. Social media platforms allow us to interact with each other. 
And I know I'm not a young buck anymore. I mean, I thought I was technologically wise. But the technology is changing and growing in leaps and bounds continually every single day. It's growing at an exponential pace. Just a matter of time before they can do anything they want using the technology that's available. And it's becoming cheaper and cheaper every year. This previous research has shown that young people find the flavoring of electronic cigarettes appealing. Well, I think everybody finds the flavor appealing we wouldn't have thousands of flavors of vodka if people didn't like flavors common sense but they're going to twist it into oh only the kids like flavors kind of like adults don't like ice cream huh you don't like ice cream do you do you go to dairy queen king cone or any of these other ice cream places or do only the kids go there I try to see things from their perspective, but sometimes it's all about money. So all it comes down to is the money. Foundation to give $100,000 in grants to area nonprofits. If you are near a uh, nonprofit organization and you just went through the hardship of the whole COVID lockdowns, and had no money, wouldn't you be glad to take somebody's money? And all you have to do is tell people that, oh, vaping is bad. Mm-hmm. And with the mass misinformation that's going on out there, people honestly believe that this is worse than a cigarette because they don't want to actually look and find out about the science about it. So they believe it, and they take the money, and they're out there preaching. It's very impossible. It's making it very impossible for people to actually make a dent in what's happening. <coughs> Since I got onto Twitter, I have been impressed with how many people I see every single day, all day long, tweeting back at people that are spreading misinformation. But when you look at the actual numbers of the people that already have misconceived notions about it, It's disheartening. So, the sad reality is everybody needs to take part in this. Even if it's one tweet a day replying back to somebody that's out there spreading bullshit. Get on there. Reply back to the politicians when they make these stupid moves. Mr. Krishna Murphy. Yeah. I saw a tweet on there from Michelle Minton towards him telling him, listen, you want to say that about Biden? Well, how about you're doing the same thing with harm reduction products? Call him out on it. That's where all the conversations go. Moving on. San Jose posed to ban flavored tobacco products. Well, there aren't any flavored tobacco. It's federally illegal in the state, in the United States, to have flavored cigarettes. The only flavored tobacco you can have is for hookahs and for pipes. So what are they talking about? <laughs> they're banning flavored vapes. That's exactly what they're doing. And they're blaming it on cartoons. Colorful packaging, complete with cartoon characters and flavors such as bubblegum, candy, and grape. I love grape. There's the Salty Man. And I have the one I'm using right now. Ruthless Grape Drank. Oh, yeah. Where's my other one? Oh, yeah. There we go. Grape white. Mm-hmm. They're all grape flavors because I love grape flavors. I'm not a kid. 
And it's not going anywhere. It's not fake. I'm not a kid. Flavored tobacco is designed to be enticing and increase youth tobacco use. Yeah. Okay. These are not tobacco products. So leave them alone. Moving on. As you can see here, you have tobacco and you have menthol. That's it. There are no other flavored tobacco products unless you're talking about harm reduction products. Those are flavored because as a harm reduction product, you want to attract as many people as possible to reduce the harm to society. Michigan House advances multiple bills banning vitamin E acetate in vaping products. Mm hmm. Listen, common sense will tell you if you put out a product and it contains vitamin E acetate in it and your customers get sick, your company is going to look really bad. So I guarantee you there's nobody out there putting vitamin E acetate into any type of a product after the big scare. Kind of like the whole popcorn lung situation with diacetyl and the vape manufacturing companies. They said, we need to get rid of diacetyl in the very few ingredients that we have that's literally less than a drop in a bottle this size. But we need to get rid of it all. Even though every cigarette has more diacetyl than was ever in any manufactured vape juice. But that's neither here nor there. We have the Centers for Disease Control strongly linking THC products containing vitamin E acetate to 68 deaths. And that's where they left it. Totally forgot about mentioning the fact that none of those products were actual THC products issued by a pharmacy that was getting it through the normal supply chain. All the THC products that caused these injuries and these deaths were gotten on the black market because it's too expensive to get the ones through the normal channels. And even if it's not too expensive, a profiteering person that's uninformed is going to take their own and they're going to find a way to get it cheaper if they can get it cheaper. All businesses do that. That's exactly what happened here. Black market tainted THC carts were what caused all the damages. But here they are passing laws saying not allowed to have vitamin E acetate in any type of product. So House Bill 4249 and 4250 and House Bill 4251 something you need to keep an eye on because they might start off saying that it's going to be only about this well we know from first-hand experience that's not what takes place so i talked about earlier well, i went on my little rant here is 2021 lgbtq pride month so there's all kinds of events and parades and whatnot going around all around the world Started back in June 28, 1969. Be linking the article if you want to check it out. This is 2021. If you still have stigmatism and bias towards people that choose to live differently than you, you need to rethink your life. Let these people live the way that they want to live. All right, moving on. Here we talked about it, and you thought it was clickbait. It wasn't. Science supports smoking a blunt with your lobster before you eat it. True science, not some made up crap. This is legitimately something that somebody decided to go and test. They wanted to know if these lobsters could get high. Uh huh. I mean, it's 2021. They've already done science on, you know, figuring out how many hot dogs people can consume. They discovered how to grow chicken nuggets and bacon in a lab. 
They even developed edible holograms. Yeah. They got the vaccine out so we can go back to a normal life. Beautiful, right? Why not study if lobsters can get high? Yeah. Groundbreaking study. Main restaurant that's famous for hot boxing lobsters. Did a study. They went and got blunt and they put the lobsters in there and they smoked them up. And then they measured them and their behavior and the reactions and they saw them. Yep, they were high. And as you know, if you are any kind of a chef, when you cook meat that was scared shitless before it died, it's tough and hard and has other flavorings added because of the panic that that animal went through before it died. Well, they found out. They get these lobsters high before they throw them in the pot of boiling water. <laughs> It makes the lobster taste even better. Check out the link in the description below if you want to see about how these lobsters got high and how you should smoke a blunt with your lobster before you boil it to death. Or, I have been a staunch, oh, I don't know, stuck up asshole, I guess you can call it. That's because I got kids been divorced don't want to go to court ever again so until my daughter turns 18 whatever the law is that's what i follow if they made this illegal i'd have to stop doing it but that's neither here nor there the reality is the truth will eventually come out about everything and when it does the states that are left high and dry dragging their feet to make change we're going to look like idiots. There's a reason this is all being legalized all around the world. The science is out there about that too. I just haven't really looked into it. I had a couple conversations with people. Only come to find out that, uh, you know what? If they're willing to lie, if the federal government is willing to lie to scare people away from tobacco harm reduction, what else have been they lying about their whole time? Yeah, well... There's people out there that do what they want to do. And I don't blame them. And once my kids are grown, I'll go to a state that's legal and I'll do it too. What the hell? Well, here's a nice long conversation taken about. EN Joint has decided to develop the EN Joint Disposable Electronic Cigarette. Yeah. And, um being done in france yeah the page has to been translated so this is going on in france right now cannabis is illegal in france and the consumption of e-liquids with the scent of cannabis is fully authorized and available for those that choose to do it but if it actually had cannabis in it well then they would be um punishable by a year of imprisonment and 3750 euros Oh, fine. If you're caught by the popo police, the electronic cigarette is the only legal alternative to the EN joint. Mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty interesting. And that is something that would be kind of cool. If you were a cannabis user and somebody came up with a cannabis-flavored vape, that might be something you would seek out. You never know. The flavor possibilities are endless because people love flavors. So, a little bit of science before we cut out for the day. This one is published in The Lancet. Another psychiatry science report. Depressive symptoms, mental well-being, and substance use among adolescents before and during the COVID pandemic in Iceland, a longitudinal population-based summary. What are we finding out? We're finding out the COVID and the COVID situation is hard. 
And it's hard for people to deal with change. And it's especially hard when you have adolescents that deal with the fact that they're growing up. It's that simple. When you were growing up, if you didn't have it easy and you were traumatized, you're going to have consequences the rest of your life because of it. And you're always going to be a little different than everybody else because of it too. That's the fact of life. Well, that's what these kids are doing nowadays. Why do you think they're out there thrill-seeking? Kids do what kids do. It's time to understand the bigger picture of play here. Hundreds of thousands of lives can easily be saved with every single incremental change that we allow happen. It's just a matter of time. Tobacco harm reduction works. Matter of fact, there are people that accidentally quit smoking because of picking up a jewel or picking up a puff bar. And some of them are even accidentally quit by trying somebody's vape because they picked it up and they go, hmm, that tastes good. And then they didn't think about the fact that that replaced their cigarette. And before they knew it, when they went out and they got their own setup and they tried it out, they realized, man, this is a lot easier than trying to quit cold turkey. It's certainly a lot easier than using a patch. But you didn't expect to be able to quit that easily because anytime a smoker has tried to quit smoking, they come to find out how hard it really is and how powerful of an addiction cigarettes have become to them. I remember the first time I tried to quit smoking and to be honest with you beforehand, I always thought everybody else was full of shit because I figured, oh, if I wanted to quit, I could quit. No problem. And some dumbass dared me to try. He says, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you can quit for a whole week without a single cigarette. At that point in my life, I was already smoking a pack and a half, two packs a day. And then I found out, oops, this addiction's a little harder than I thought it was going to be. I was a smart ass. I played it off for a couple of days. And then they caught me. I was still smoking because I wanted it that bad. And as time went on, I went and saw the doctor. They said, you need to quit smoking. You're losing circulation in your legs because you're smoking. Yeah, sure. It's because of that. It's not because of anything else. Yeah. Then you read stories and you hear stories and you talk to people. And I was a medic for 15 years. I saw a lot of shit. A lot of shit that turn anybody's stomach, make you go out and puke right out to the freaking door as soon as you got done dealing with somebody. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you're a smoker, and you've tried everything else in the world, give vaping a try. There's a reason why it's so popular. All right, that's it for me. I'll catch you all next week. Hope you all have a great weekend. I appreciate you watching. Peace, love, and hunky vape. It's all you need.